Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. This is Real Magic Review, and this is Experiencing the Impossible, The Science of Magic by Gustav Kuhn. Before we review this, please have a little looky at this. If you're like me and you're constantly trying to up your game with a deck of cards, you want to be an expert, you don't just want to know a couple of tricks, you want to be really knowledgeable, then go and check out cardmagiccourse.com. It's my online resource. It is everything I know with a deck of cards. Uh, there's 180 plus videos on there and it's just had an overhaul. There's moves, theory, help with performance, and you can always email if there's something on there that you, don't, uh, that you can't see, and I'll do what I can to create more content for you. So it's a really bespoke learning experience. Uh, so if you go through that from beginning to end, if you're a serious beginner or you're already established, you're going to know so much more than most people with a deck of cards. Uh, so cardmagiccourse.com and there are a few free previews on there. If you go onto Card Controls Volume 2, you'll get a free preview of the spread card. Uh, and one more thing, very important, please like and subscribe down there. Hit the bell so you'll get notifications and don't forget to look in the comments bit at the end. There'll be all the links and the info you need on the product and of course the card course. Here's the review. So it's a funny one, this, isn't it? Because on the on first blush, on the, on, on the face of it, it may not look like this is a magic book to be reviewed in the way that it isn't, you know, like these magic books where you get a lot of tricks, learn how to do, and then a lot of explanations, or you get a magical theory, which is geared towards magicians. And this isn't a book written for magicians, or is it? And, and that's all part of the a part of the illusion, I suppose, is that is, is on the first look, it doesn't look like it, but the more I looked into this, maybe there's more in there that... Uh, that meets the eye, so to speak. So I've, there's been a couple of books on this. There's uh, Magic in Theory, uh, which is Peter Lamont, Richard Wiseman, uh, Slight of Mind, which I've I've also got, which I can't find actually. I just looked at my thought I had it here, and I'm getting slightly panicky that I can't see it anywhere. But both books that I got a lot out of uh, as a magician, not just not just for interest. But but this is something that. Well, I did a bit of disclosure. I did a talk with Gustav um, a few years ago, and we did a TEDx talk, uh, sort of together, and we worked together a little bit. So I do know Gustav. Uh, so I was a little bit worried when he, oh, worry's not the right word, but he said he'd written a book on the science of magic, and and could I review it? And I, I read Slights of Mind and 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 this Magic in Theory, and I, th I was worried it was going to be the same thing. And because when we did the talk, we covered the you know, the, the the amount of information we take in on a day-to-day -day basis compared to the amount of information that's out there and kind of how the eyes work and and this kind of idea of saccades or saccades, I don't know the the, um, the right pronunciation, but Tom Stone's also talked about this. And so I, I, I was worried if it wasn't going to give me anything new, that it was just another book on the science of magic. And uh, thankfully, uh, that isn't the case. But why? The first thing is that if you get flip through, you do see a couple of the usual pictures of the of the illusions that we see, and, and it goes into into optical illusions and why they work, which is all interesting stuff. But I've I've seen that before, and it doesn't but it doesn't dwell on that. And I think Gustav's written this because he knows that there's a lot out there uh, on this stuff. So he starts off asking the question, "What is magic?" And this is a question that. As magicians, we, we talk about all the time. What is magic for people? How do people experience magic? What does it mean? Is it suspension of disbelief? Is it just the fact you're showing someone an optical illusion? Is it a demonstration of something unusual? Is it, or is it going deeper and, and sort of tapping into our existing beliefs? And this is where the book, for me, was quite quickly going into something a little bit deeper and a little bit wider. Because what it does is it, yes, it, it talks about magic a lot and it talks about illusion and how it all works, but it also talks about why it works and actually for magicians that's pretty important stuff because if we can tap into that kind of deeper deeper kind of why then for the creation of magic and for the performance of magic that's the knowledge that informs us so we've got two things going on here we've got we've got the deeper sort of sociological cultural stuff which sounds really really heavy but it's not written in that way and we'll go into that in a minute um and 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 we've got the the way magic works. So we've got the chapters on what is misdirection. And that gives us more information that we think we're going to get as well, because a lot of us have read about misdirection. You know, we've read the books of wonder, not all of us, but some of us, we've read that in most tricks, misdirection is built in, like things like the cups and balls. But we don't know about the sort of other kinds of misdirection, uh, which I'm not going to go into in detail here, because I'm not just going to list everything in the book. But there are some surprises there, and there were some 
some aspects for me that I thought, well, I, I haven't really thought about that and I can use that. I get, that knowledge is gonna, is gonna give me more faith in my misdirection because the thing misdirection is, especially when we're learning it, we kind of think, are we gonna get away with this? And this kind of gives us the, the why of that. So there's all that practical, those raw materials that we can, that tell us why our magic works, but there's also this, this idea of what, you know, what's, going on in, what's going on in the spectator's mind and how that can differ. And what's really interesting in the book, and I'm going to say this, what's really interesting a lot, because there's loads of it fascinated me, was how different people are going to experience our magic differently. So, yes, we, we're used to the fact, if you've performed for a long time, that when you perform a trick to a kid, it's going to be very different to when you perform it to an adult, because they've got a different past, they've got a different history, they've got different life experiences. But actually, within adults, you know, we different cultures are going to react differently to tricks, different belief systems. And what was really interesting was this this idea that if someone actually believes in mind reading, arguably they're probably not going to be as impressed with a mind reading routine because they believe in it. And that kind of goes against what I've thought. You kind of want to make people to believe in it, but actually if they don't believe in mind reading and you're reading their mind, they're going to be more impressed, if you see what I mean. So, so that throws up other other questions as well. So the, bu the book always throws the net wide. It always takes those things we've already got um, and throws them wide and also gives us, gives us, like I said, the toolkits to, to actually perform magic. Um, and then there's this stuff on, you know, how much of our world we perceive, which again, as magicians, we should know, but a lot of it we don't. So, you know, when you are doing, you know, when you're working on something like a watch deal or it can feel like, God, this is never going to work. But when you take this theory into, you know, into it, you can trust that a bit more and go, even though this seems like it shouldn't work, it does. And the coin under the watch is another one. You know, it's, it's people, when you do it to sort of say, I didn't actually feel it. And they can't get why and why the why is in this book. And. Uh, and, and then further into things like the illusion of free will, that when we discuss free will, that how much of our will is free or how much is easily manipulated, that gives us more and more. So it keeps, it keeps sort of piling on the information I think we need or should have as magicians to be able to, like I've said, to create our magic and to take it to a, the next level and trust that it's going to work. So there are loads of, I can go into that. I'll just mention the, the, the sort of, as we get to the end of the book so it goes through all all that stuff and then it goes through the application of magic in into the wider world and how it can be not just a form of entertainment but something to enrich people's lives or something that can be used in things like the military and i'm not saying that's enriching people's lives um in espionage but things like the breathe project you know which we've heard about if you've listened to the magician's podcast and rich mcdougall and people like that are involved with the magic circle are involved with where you are literally taking magic and improving people's lives and not just showing them a trick. I'm not belittling just showing them a trick because that's all good as well. And I think the argument of the book is basically saying we've got this, we've got this resource, we've got magicians that have been doing this stuff for years and we can learn more from magicians than just the science, which is how the brain works, but also the psychology and the cultural stuff around it. Um, and I'm not saying this very eloquently, as, as eloquently as it would have been put in the book, because I'm not an academic, but you know what I mean, it's giving us, a, giving us a further depth. And I think that the main difference between this and the existing books is they gave us the science and were fantastic at doing that. But this, this gives us a, a bit more of the psychology, which I think is what he says at the book at the end and, and pins more on it, uh, that tell us not just about being magicians but being human beings it gives us an insight into what it's like to be human and for me that's what i'm interested in and of course i'm biased because i am interested in that so the good things about this book other than what i've already said um are the fact that this is a well-written it's an academic book okay gustav is an academic but he's also a magician and a human being with a family and those anecdotes and those human anecdotes come into this this could have been and and I've read books like it before, not really on this subject, that do go a little bit too academic. It's written like a, like a paper. And it, even though it follows those rules, it gives you all the references. It does, um, it does give you the, the human element to it, which, make, which makes it an enjoyable read. And that's the important thing. The learning isn't going to go in uh, if it's not enjoyable. The book is also very palatable. The way, it's, the way it's chaptered out is, you know, you can go in there and reference certain things quite easily. And it's well referenced at the end. Um, and for me, like I've said, it's it's great for magicians. Um, it's really good for lay people as well, and we'll go into that in a minute. And it's just a just a bang on read, and it's it's a pretty book. 
it, you know, it's a nice, and for magicians, we like our books. This is, this is a nicely bound, um, nice looking piece of kit, as it were. That's the wrong word, isn't it, for a book, but you know what I mean. Uh, and you are going to be full of great stories to tell in the pub about how the mind works and how we function as magicians. I love the thing of the um, immobile absence illusion, which you'll see in it, which is, you know, if you ever see it on TV where um, they block certain things out to make people look naked and then they, they sort of reveal them and they're actually wearing clothes. But it's it's that kind of thing. So the fact that our minds go towards seeing empty space before stuff in that space means that we can we can use that. We can use that in our misdirection. And that's not going to make much sense until you look into it, but... But there you go. Uh, so the challenges of this book, and this is what I think a l some people, not a lot, some people have been talking about. Uh, there is exposure in the book, and this is a huge discussion, and I'd be really, really interested to to hear your thoughts on this. My thoughts are as follows, and they are only my thoughts. Yes, there is exposure in this book. Is there exposure of every magic trick? No. Um, there's probably no more, it's, oh, I've got to reach for it then, isn't it? Sleight of mind, it's in there, you know, this book, there's exposure, you know, it, ha it has to talk around the magic tricks. And there were a couple of moments when I kind of went, uh, is that too exposey, which isn't a real word I know, but is, is that is that too much? Do we need to know that? And my feeling is, is this. People to find this exposure have to go and buy, they have to hear about the book or find it in a shop go and buy the book, read the book, and get to a certain part of the book before that exposure is presented to them. Now, it doesn't overexpose details. So when it talks about the cups and balls, it doesn't talk about them in, every, you know, this is when this happened, but it tells you that you put the stuff under there, you know, the fruit gets under the cup. And I think, I'm, I'm, my feeling is I'm okay with all that. It also exposes the, the multiplying billion ball, billiard balls, I'm kind of okay with that. Not that many people do it. And again, the percentage of the people that are going to make that effort to find this, buy the book, etc., when you can go on YouTube and just see it. And I th the other thing is someone said to me the other day, but yes, but this could be accidental exposure. Someone could look at this and all of a sudden find something they didn't want to know. And go, I didn't really want to know that. Maybe, but the same way that you've got the clickbait on YouTube saying Dynamo's tr magic trick exposed or published in the newspaper, you know, people on Britain's Got Talent, Magic Trick Exposed, you know, you, it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And this is the world we live in now. So yes, I totally understand. I'm not arguing against that. The exposure part is an issue for some people. And I really respect that. For me, the percentage of people that are going to get that exposure, I'm kind of okay with it. You know, I've exposed tricks by getting them wrong before. So exposure is there. It's part of it. But I'm not, I haven't got a massive problem with this. But some people have and uh, and that's fine. Um, but that's about it. I, I really recommend this. I, I think these books, these kind of books, and this book especially, will give you more insight into how your magic works and inspire your magic than a lot of books that are actually aimed to do that. You know, Gustav's written this for lay people, but I think he's also written this with an eye, with magicians in mind. Um, but, you know, you look at Ascanio and, and people like that, they've, that's, a, that's what I'm kind of comparing this to. And I'm not comparing Gustav to Ascanio. I'm sure he'd love that. But as a magician, but just as the, the thinking behind this. And remember, all of this comes from research. You know, he is a scientist and a magician. And there isn't anything that's just opinion. And the things that are just opinion, he very clearly states, this may be wrong, but it's my opinion. And that's why I like reading books written by scientists, because scientists don't think they know it all. Scientists are trying to... And, and so psychologists are trying to, in, mostly trying to prove a hypothesis. They have an hypothesis and they want to prove it right or wrong without any agenda. You know, with all the best will in the world, you're reading theory books by magicians that are a lot of time are very opinionated and based on their experience that could be very, very different from us. So this is a little bit more objective. It will give you a more of an objective insight and then to be able to make your own decisions around those objective uh, insights. So... Uh, there's my thoughts on that. I really liked it. I thought it was a great read. Um, you can you can buy this everywhere. It's on Amazon and stuff. It's not just a, a magic book thing, uh, a, ma a magic shop thing. So uh, let me know you, your thoughts, comments. Please do comment. And uh, remember, check out Card Magic Course. Please like and subscribe. Uh, and thanks very much. Have a great one. Cheers.